With great pleasure, I present to you the 15-minute recording of the post titled How to Test Prophecy and What Must Be Done to Fulfill It. The first part contains a number of scriptures, but then I explain what happens when a believer listens to the voice of the Lord and obeys it. How to test prophecy and what must be done to fulfill it. In my previous post titled Who Are You Friends With? I promise to write about prophecies, hearing the voice of the Lord and how to test the authenticity of a prophecy is a word for a specific situation sent by the Lord. Every word that the Lord reveals to someone exactly corresponds to the Bible. For example, in the Old Testament, we often find prophetic words about the birth and mission of Jesus the Savior. In the New Testament, we see fulfillment of each of these prophetic words clearly portrayed. Here are several examples from the Old and New Testaments, respectively. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Prophecy of Isaiah 7:14, the Old Testament. But while he thought about these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. The Gospel of Matthew, first chapter 20 to 23 verses. The New Testament. Another example. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are a little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. The prophecy of Micah 5.2, the Old Testament. And when he, Herod, had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, the Gospel of Matthew 2, 4 to 5 verses, the New Testament. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. These census first took place while Quirinus was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. The Gospel of Luke 2, 1 to 5 verses, the New Testament. Yet another example. And out of Egypt I called my son, prophecy of Hosea 11, 1, the Old Testament. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. The Gospel of Matthew 2, 13-15 verses, the New Testament. When fulfillment of a prophetic word requires a long period of time, the Lord reveals the process as well. In the examples above in both Old and New Testaments, it is mentioned that the Savior would be called Emmanuel, would be born in Bethlehem, but the Father would call him from Egypt. This condition is important because there are instances when someone gives a prophetic word in the name of the Lord, but it is not fulfilled, while the one who prophesies, and probably others as well, wait in hope that it will still be fulfilled in future. 
For example, in 2020, during the 44-day war in Armenia, there were people who prophesied Armenia will not only have victory, but will also conquer new territories. We ended in bitter defeat with heavy human and territorial losses. Those who prophesied and even others are still sure that these prophecies have been of the Holy Spirit and the people of Armenia will see the victory in future. However, these proclamations could not be of the Lord because the Lord would give the word in a different way. He would say that first there would be a defeat, then a victory, and would speak about the right time when the prophetic word is to be fulfilled. We see the character of the Lord in the examples above. He reveals the process in advance and watches it to be fulfilled exactly as spoken, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet Matthew 2.14. Concerning the victory of Armenia, it will happen when the nation humbles itself before the Lord and walks in ways that are pleasing to Him. This victory will hardly be achieved at the price of blood and new victims of war. The person who received the prophecy plays an important role in its fulfillment. There was drought and famine in Samaria for three years. The Lord told his prophet Elijah, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. 1 Kings 18.1 Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. 1 Kings 18.42 After Elijah gave the word from the Lord to Ahab, he went up to the Mount of Carmel for prayer. Having prayed, he told his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. 1 Kings 18, 43. The servant looked and said, There is nothing. Elijah told him, Go again, and he did it seven times. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened. In the meantime, that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. 1 Kings 18, 44 and 45 verses. The Lord always fulfills His word, but a believer must fulfill the desires of the Lord too. There must be a fellowship between the Lord and the believer. The believer must know the voice of the Holy Spirit and do everything exactly as he desires. If Elijah had prayed once and then waited for the rain, nothing would have happened. While praying, he understood what to do next, and his actions were purpose-driven. The Lord always works in unique ways. Therefore, intimacy between the Lord and the believer must develop constantly. If a believer has received a word from the Lord, but it has not been fulfilled yet, he shall not despair and think that the Lord is unfaithful. It is necessary to test whether the word is really from the Bible. Also, it is possible that this word is from the Bible, but still is not sent by the Lord. It is important for every godly person to be able to discern the voice of the Lord, to be trained in it, and to live according to the desires of the Lord. A believer cannot constantly ask a preacher or a church minister to pray for him. He must experience spiritual growth and development, as well as have intimacy with the Holy Spirit, so that he can receive answers to the questions that concern him from the Lord personally. The Lord desires such intimacy. In the matter of hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and understanding His leading, the book by Kenneth Hagen called How to Be Led by the Holy Spirit truly helped me. I started to discern the voice of the Lord and witnessed many miracles in my life. Later, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, I wrote a book titled Who Can Hear the Voice of the Lord, in which I not only explain 
the ways that the Lord chooses to give us His Word, but also bring relevant examples. An important event in my life. In 1992, when I was taking my first steps in leading the Go and See social ministry, I prayed to the Lord and asked Him to open an opportunity to get an appropriate education. Of course, the Holy Spirit is my first teacher and His leading is necessary for me in every situation. However, professional education is also important and necessary. I received a word from the Lord, throw the anchors of your hope to the heaven. You will receive help from England. Before that, I had never been to England, nor I knew anyone there, and I did not even know that the New Testament mentions the anchor of hope. I asked one of my friends whether this expression is from the Bible. He confirmed it and read the passage from chapter 6 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, which says that we must hold fast the promises and inherit them through hope who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19 verses. Wonderful! The Word of God told me that I needed to lay hold of the hope, which is a sure and steadfast anchor for us. I understood that I needed to wait for an answer from heaven, from the Lord. My hope in the Lord truly was like a steadfast anchor. Soon after that, by the leading of the Lord, a person from England came into my life and gave me an opportunity to get professional education in England, France and Switzerland. But before this happened, some significant things took place in my life. I was invited to seminars on social work organization and management, which took place twice here in Yerevan. They were organized by specialists from the USA and Europe. I attended those seminars for three years in a row thinking that it was the door from the Lord in answer to my prayer. After each of the seminars, one of the organizers, whose name was Guy Calvert Lee, always had an additional meeting with me and asked questions about my ministry. At first, I politely answered all his questions, but the fact that at every meeting for three years, he asked the same questions and I naturally gave the same answers made me upset and I decided not to have meetings with him anymore. He did not tell me about his plans or work. I only knew that he was one of the organizers of those seminars. At the end of the three-year period, he again visited Armenia and asked me to meet him. I decided that this time I would answer his questions in such a way that he would never want to have a meeting with me again. I thought that he had a memory problem. I also thought that probably he kept losing his notes, which he was taking during our conversations. When we met and, in my mind, I tried to choose the rudest wording to answer him, but the Holy Spirit gently told me, be polite and answer all his questions. I was very surprised, but I obeyed. He again opened his computer and again asked the same questions. In obedience to the Lord, I answered all of them in a polite way. Our conversation, which lasted for about an hour, ended and we kindly said goodbye to one another. I hoped I would never see him again, because the seminars were over and we received the knowledge we needed to organize and manage a social ministry. A year later, I received an invitation from England to get more advanced and professional education in London. This invitation was from Guy Calvert Lee. Later, through funding from his organization, I continued my education in France and Switzerland. When I saw him in London and met his wife and daughter, I learned that they were godly people and that God led him to open wide doors for my education. Every year, having met me in Armenia and asked the same questions, he was assured that my plans and visions were received from heaven 
because I always gave the same answers and faithfulness to what I received from the Lord. What could have happened if during our last meeting I had not heard the voice of the Holy Spirit or had not obeyed Him? I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Indeed, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Isaiah 46, 8 to 11 verses. The Lord is always faithful. 